So, James, what I'm going to show you are 13 Stolperstein stumbling blocks. On my mission to determine where Heinrich Himmler sits in Hitler's hierarchy of evil, I've returned to Munich. I'm here to meet journalist Terry Schwartzberg to learn about the world's largest memorial. Everywhere the Nazis killed people, Jews, gypsies, homosexuals, there are Stolperstein. As you'll see, you don't stumble over them despite their name. You stumble upon them, and that's what we're about to do. The Stolperstein project began in 1992. Each bronze plaque remembers a victim who suffered under the Nazis. From the millions murdered in the camps Himmler devised to the thousands more who survived them, as well as those who fled persecution. So it's commemorating not just people who were murdered, but also people who survived right. persecution as well as suffering it. Right. These Stolperstein are for three Jewish families. This family, the Rosners here, as you can see, mother, father, four children. Look here, over here, if you can. Miriam Grunbaum, when she was arrested, she was three years old. Three. Three years old. And she was murdered in Auschwitz in 1942. I mean, I have children. What? How can you murder children? How can you murder a three-year-old? I just, I can't get my, my head around that. These people are completely innocent. Inspired by the Talmudic saying, a person is only forgotten when his or her name is forgotten, the stones evoke the memory of those the Nazis attempted to erase. Once a stone is complete, it's placed in the ground in front of the victim's home. Each one begins with here lived. Stolperstein are not just a project of commemoration, but we're a family. A family comprised of the victims, comprised of their descendants, their families, comprised of the people who donate the stones, the people who research the stones, and the people who come and learn about the Holocaust by stumbling upon, not over them, but stumbling upon these Stolperstein. Terry and other volunteers regularly polish the stones so they don't vanish from sight. So here's your water, okay. here's your polish, here's your sponge. Sponges are coming, they're a bit wet. Yeah, just scrub it. Yeah, and scrub it dub dub. And try to keep yourself clean in the process. Oh, it's coming along very nicely. Good. Here comes the miracle. Look how beautiful they get. Incredible. They're all nice and shiny. They really are very beautiful. Yes. Made by hand, that's the whole idea. We really? can Demnick, the artist, he says it's an art project and not a mass production product, so they really need to be made by hand, stamped by hand, put into the ground. The project has led to the creation of more than 70,000 Stolperstein across 24 countries, but that's a drop in the ocean. The aim is to remember every single person persecuted by the Nazis, including survivors. We have to put about 18 million Stolperstein in the ground. 18 million. Yeah, and we've gotten 70,000. It's a job that's going to take us a while. So we'll be busy for generations. That's amazing. It must be very fulfilling for you to be able to do this as well, to, to keep the memory of these people alive. Yes. Well, I think each person should be remembered. Each person's fate twists your guts, twists your innards. Mm -hmm. It makes you realize that you, me, and everybody else, these people were just normal people living their lives, and one day somebody said, you're going to be killed, you're going to be persecuted, and they lost everything. I think for my children and for all the children to come, the Stolperstein are the best guarantee that we will never experience something like the Nazis again, because they remind us how easily it can happen and that it did happen, and that's why they've never been more important than they are now.